What's up guys, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started with executing Python on Jupyter Notebooks on AWS Cloud for absolutely free of cost. So if you're a beginner who's looking to get started on AWS, you're at the right place. Now to be able to get started, first of all, you need an active AWS account, obviously. And secondly, you need to install AWS CLI in your local machine, which I'm gonna show you shortly. So what is AWS CLI? It's basically a command line interface, which is CLI. And the CLI allows you to manage and automate AWS services directly using the command line. In other words, CLI lets you interact with your AWS account by just using a set of commands. For example, you can create an S3 bucket, spin up an EC2 virtual machine, and a lot more just by running simple commands from your terminal. And if you're a beginner on AWS, it's quite important you get used to the basic commands using the AWS CLI because it's extremely handy, especially when it comes to automation, CI, CD, data engineering, and machine learning tasks. So you'll understand this better when you go deeper into the uh, command line interface. So what's our objective here? I'm gonna show you first how to set up an EC2 instance, which is a virtual machine on AWS Cloud, and we will be using the free tier. So you won't incur any cost at all. Once this is done, we will SSH or log in into this EC2 instance from our local terminal and install pip, Python 3, and Jupyter Notebook. Finally, we will tweak some basic security configurations and access the Jupyter Notebook from the browser. So by the end of this video, you will have a Jupyter Notebook running on a virtual machine on AWS free of charge, using which you can start executing and practicing Python on AWS Cloud. All right, so the first step is to install AWS CLI, right? So all you need to do is go to Google and type install AWS CLI and click on the first or the second link. Now, whichever link you click on, make sure to click on install slash update. You really don't need to go through all of this documentation. And if you scroll further down, you will see the installation instructions. So depending on your operating system, just expand the tab and follow the instructions. Now the installation is very simple. It's like installing any application on your local system. Once you're done with the installation, depending on your OS, you must open up your terminal. And to make sure your installation has happened correctly, just type which AWS, all right? So you should be able to see the output. You can even type AWS double hyphen version, and you should see the version that has been installed in your local system. All right, so now that you've installed the AWS CLI, the next step is to set up your terminal to communicate with your AWS account. Now this basically means every time you execute a command from your terminal, it will be executed against the resources in your AWS account. Now for that, you must go back to your terminal and type AWS space configure, all right? Now you need to enter two keys. One is your access key ID, and the next one is your secret key. So how do you get it? Now, once you're logged into your AWS account, go back to your console, click against your name, and select security credentials. Now here I'm gonna show you how to create the access keys. If you scroll further down, you will see the access key section. Click on create access key. Now, you can see the prompt here. I'm, I've been logged into my AWS account as a root because I'm the admin of this account, but you should never create access keys for the root account. Usually or ideally, you should create a user and use that user account in order to create the access keys. But since this is a demo, it's all right. So I'm gonna check this box and click on create access keys. All right, so here you see the access key and the secret access key, right? Make sure you copy both of them and store it safely in a text file or something. And I'm gonna click on show, copy it and paste it here. And these are the two values that we will enter in our terminal. So let me go back. The first one is access key ID. So I'm gonna paste it and hit enter. And the second one is the secret access key. Let's hit enter. Now the default region in my case is US East one. You might see a different value, which is okay. And this is the region that I usually select for all my workloads. So I'm just gonna hit enter. 
and the default output format is none which is okay we can change it later if you want to i'm just gonna say enter and that's pretty much it you have successfully authenticated your local terminal to interact with your aws account all right so now the next step is to create an ec2 instance now for those who don't know an ec2 instance is nothing but a virtual machine it's basically like having a computer running on cloud and you own this computer all right now with this you can pretty much do anything that you do with your own machine right you can install packages you can install software you can even execute code so let's go back to our aws console and type ec2 and select it now you can select instances from the main screen or from the left navigation so let's click on it and select launch instance now instance in this case means a virtual machine which is an ec2 instance so let's start by giving this instance a name i'm going to call this demo instance and the next step is to select an operating system for your virtual machine now you can scroll through this you will see pretty much all the operating systems there is out there that you can use in your virtual machine now for now i'm going to select ubuntu and ubuntu is what i usually use which a lot of the people a lot of people and companies use because it's open source for the version i'm going to select 22.04 which is the latest one and you can see it says free tier eligible keep scrolling down do not change the architecture and the instance type is quite important i'm going to select t2 micro uh, because it has the free tier eligibility now in some regions you might not see t2 you might see t3 that's also fine it falls under the free tier category all right and you can see on the right hand side at the bottom it says you have 750 hours of free consumption using the t2 micro which should be more than enough for us so select t2 micro scroll further down and the next step is to create a key pair now if this is the first time you're using your aws account or if it's a new account you might not have a key pair file in which case you must click on create a new key pair now a key pair is basically a file which contains your public and private key and aws uses this information in order to encrypt and decrypt the login information when you try to log into your ec2 instance from your local terminal which is exactly what we'll be doing shortly so give your key pair a name now you can call this uh, let's say personal ec2 kp indicating key pair and the file format is pm and let's just click on create key pair all right so the file is downloaded as you can see in my local system uh, make sure to save it in a specific folder because we might require it later when we log into our ec2 system now keep scrolling down uh, leave the default option as is which is create a security group i'm going to check the other two boxes as well which is allow https along with ssh and http as well ssh is allowed from anywhere keep scrolling down storage uh, 8 gb of type gb2 is sufficient for us now let's click on launch instance all right that's pretty much it Let's click on this unique identifier and you can see the instance state is pending. Give it a couple of moments, you will see the instance state change to running. All right, so the state has changed. As you can see, it is set to running, which means our EC2 virtual machine is up and running successfully. Now let's click on the instance ID. And here, let's click on connect. So what we're trying to do is trying to basically connect to our ec2 instance to see if it works now once you click on connect just let the default selections be as is connect using ec2 instance connect and the username if you notice it is the default one which is ubuntu because we're using an ubuntu operating system right now let's click on connect and this is going to open up a terminal on the browser all right there you go so this is your ec2 instance and you can type a bunch of commands here you can install do whatever you want so if you see this is the path and if you type ls you will see there's absolutely nothing it's a clean slate there's no files nothing at all now personally i never use the browser terminal of my ec2 instance because a lot of times especially when you're developing 
your data science models and machine learning models or your ETL pipelines and whatnot, there's a need to transfer files from your local system uh, to your EC2 instance, or you might want to download files from your EC2 instance back to your local system, things of that sort. So I usually connect to my EC2 instance from the local terminal by running the SSH command, which is what I'm going to show you right now. So with that being said, let's go back to our terminal and let me clear everything. Now, if you open up the bash file, which is called ec 2 libraries which you can find in the GitHub repo, uh, which is attached in the description of this video, you will see a bunch of commands. And these are the commands that we're going to be executing inside our ec 2 instance, except for the first two ones. So the first command basically changes the permissions of your PM key pair file, which you've downloaded at the time of creating your ec 2 instance. So let's go back to our terminal. And first of all, you need to make sure that you have navigated to the subdirectory or directory where you have placed your PEM file, which was downloaded earlier. All right. So if I do an LS, you will see my PEM file is right here. So now I can say chmod 400. 400 is a permission type followed by the name of my PEM file. And I'm going to hit enter. All right. And the next command is basically logging into your EC2 instance using the SSH command. So I'm going to say SSH hyphen I followed by the name of my PM file, which I've downloaded, followed by Ubuntu, which is the username of my EC2 instance at the rate, my IPv4 DNS. Now to get the IPv4 DNS, go back to your instance, click on the instance ID, and here you will see the public IPv4 DNS. Just click on this little icon. The address will be copied to your clipboard. Come back and paste it here. That's pretty much it. Let's hit enter. All right, so you've logged in to your EC2 system or EC2 instance successfully. Now, if this is the first time uh, you're logging into your EC2 instance, you might get a prompt um, where you might have to say yes or no. So just type yes. Literally type YES and hit enter, and you should be able to see your Ubuntu at the rate IP address. All right, so now that we have logged into our system or our EC2 instance, let's install Python pip and Jupyter Notebook. So the first command is uh, basically updating the packages, which is sudo apt update. So I'm going to paste it here. All right, and this is super quick because I've already done it before, which is why in your case, it might take a bit longer. Let's go back and run the second command, which installs Python 3 pip. Let's run this. All right, I've already done this, which is why it barely took a second. In your case, it might take longer, so that's fine. Next, we install JupyterLab by saying pip install JupyterLab. All right, you can see requirements already satisfied. Let me clear this out. And now I'm going to install Jupyter Notebook. Let me paste it. Okay, that's done. Now comes the next command, which looks a bit strange, but this is the most important command. Now this command basically adds the local bin to your path environment variable. Now the path environment variable is the variable that tells the shell or your terminal where to look for executable files. And by doing this, by running this command, we're ensuring that the shell can find and execute programs installed in the directory without needing to specify the full or absolute path of the application that we are trying to execute, all right? So to put this in perspective, to put this in context in terms of what we're doing, if you do not run this command, the one that's highlighted on line number 12, and you try to run the Jupyter commands, which is Jupyter Notebook Password, or even the last one, your EC2 will not know what is this keyword Jupyter and where to find it, which is why we need to add this to our environment variable, which is path. So I'm going to copy that and paste it here. All right, now let's source it and we're good. So now I'm going to set up a password so that I can access Jupyter Notebook from the browser. 
So copy this command and paste it. All right, so this is a new password that you're trying to set up. So make sure you remember it. Set up a simple one. We entered and we're good. All right, now comes the last command, which is pretty much running Jupyter Lab so that we can access it from the browser as a root. So let me execute this. And there you go. So you can see the Jupyter Lab is running on port 8888. And we should be able to access this from the browser now. Now, if you want to access the Jupyter Notebook on your browser, you really cannot use this IP address, right? Because this is internal. It's basically local host in your EC2 instance. But now that you're trying to access EC2 instance, this is happening from the public internet gateway. So you must use the public IP, right? So go back to your EC2 instance, click on your instance ID and copy the public IPv4 address. Just click on this icon, open up a new tab, followed by your IP address, followed by colon, followed by 8888, which is where the Jupyter Lab is running, backslash lab. Let's hit enter. Now you will see it's loading. And if you wait further, it'll still keep loading, eventually failing. And this is because we haven't tweaked our security group. Now, every resource in AWS or any other cloud has something called security group, which is basically like a firewall. You can think of it as a firewall that controls the incoming and outgoing traffic to the resource in question. In this case, it is EC2. So in order to be able to tweak that, you must go back to your instance page, click on the security tab, if you scroll further down, and you will see security groups. Now, this is a new security group or a firewall that was created at the time of creating this specific EC2 instance. Usually, you know, you can use, people use the existing security groups so that they don't end up creating multiple security groups for different resources that you create, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but this is fine. Just click on the security group, scroll down, click on edit inbound rules. Inbound because this is an incoming connection, right? We're trying to access EC2 from the public internet specifically on the port 8888 so there needs to be an incoming collection allowed on port 8888 which is exactly what we're going to do click on this click on add rule custom tcp and for the port number you must type 8888 and from the source drop down just select my ip all right you can even select anywhere or just type 0, .0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 backslash 0 which basically means you're allowing connections from across the globe to your EC2 instance which is not recommended so this is my IP and now I'm going to click on save rules all right so the security group has been tweaked and you can see it automatically refreshes and now the page looks different you mean the page is accessible since we are allowed to access the port 8888 now let's enter the password and hit enter. And there you have it. Let's open up a new notebook. And also you can install libraries from within the Jupyter kernel if you want, without having to do this from the terminal. So if you want to install, let's say you want to install scikit-learn and the command is quite simple. All you have to do is put an exclamation mark followed by pip install scikit hyphen learn and there you go it's almost done that's it so that was that for this video i hope you enjoyed it and i really hope this helps if you're just getting started with your aws journey please like and subscribe for more of such videos on a weekly basis and thanks a lot for watching